All right, so this is the E43 um, video, which covers properties of logs. We did a few of these properties um, last time, some of the ones that we're going to simplify, but we have a few others um, that help us expand a complex logarithm into several logarithmic terms, and then some that to help us to take several logarithmic terms and condense it back down into one logarithmic term. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go over these properties. The first one is the log of a product is the sum of the logs. Okay, and what that looks like is if we have something like um, log base A of M times N. Okay, so in other words, we have a product inside the log. Okay, we can break this into two separate terms. This separates into an addition of log M plus log base A of N. So if you have a multiplication on the inside number, it becomes an addition of two log terms. Okay? The next one is the log of a quotient. Remember, quotient means division. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. Okay? So this means that our inside number is a fraction. We're dividing. When we're dividing, this separates into log base A of the top minus log base A of the bottom. Okay? So when we're dividing on the inside number, it becomes a subtraction. And notice the one that's being subtracted is the one that comes from the denominator. Okay? So the negative term is the one that comes from the denominator. And then the last one is that if we have the log of something raised to a power, so our inside number has an exponent, okay? we can bring that power down as a coefficient times that log term. So that looks something like log base A of M to the N power. Okay? What this says is we can bring this little N exponent out front as a coefficient. So this would be N times log base A of M. So basically what we're doing is we're taking um, this little constant uh, exponent and bringing it down out front. Okay. And all of these logs we can use in both directions. So if we have one that has multiplication, we can separate it into an addition. Or if we have an addition, we can condense it back into a multiplication. Okay. Same thing with the exponent. Um, if we have a coefficient out front, we can take that coefficient and put it back up into the exponent. Or if we have an exponent, we can bring it back down as a coefficient. Whichever one helps us in that particular case. So. So let's go ahead and look um, at a couple. Okay. Now I know that uh, some of these we learned how to solve them a different way. Like here we know log base 3 of 3 cancels, that kind of thing. I'm going to show you why some of y'all were really upset when we did um, our Math 118 assignment. Um, some of y'all were okay with marking out log base 3 of 3, but it bothered you that this 6 became a regular 6 instead of being something in the exponent. Okay. So it, the reason we have that is because of this um, this third rule here. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this exponent and bring it down out front as a coefficient. So this becomes six times log base three of three. And then notice here, log base three of three is just one. Okay, because the only thing I can raise three, um, the exponent I would have to raise three to in order to get an inside number of three is one. Okay, or in other words. Um, a log with base 3 cancels out an exponential base 3. So when those cancel, I'm left with 6 times 1, which is just 6. Okay, so now we have two ways to solve this one. We can just cancel log base 3 of 3 and get 6, or we can bring that 6 down first and then get rid of log base 3 of 3. So either way. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, on this next one, notice we have log base 10. If there's no little number written there, it's log base 10 on both of these. So notice neither, neither of these are a power of 10. So I'm going to use that second property that we have at the top of the page, which says that if we have an addition of log terms with the same base, we can condense them into a multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as log. Um, and you can write the 10 or not write the 10, doesn't matter. Um, of 40 times 5 halves. Okay, so I take whatever's inside the logs and when I condense it, I write it as a multiplication. So now notice 40 and 2, I can actually reduce because this is like 40 over 1. When I multiply fractions, 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 40 20 times. So what I'm left with here is log 
of 20 times 5, and 20 times 5 is 100. So log of 100 now can be simplified, because remember this means log base 10, anytime we have a common log. So I want to write this 100 as 10 to some power. So if I count my zeros here, notice I have two zeros, so that means it's the same as 10 squared. Okay. Then here you can go ahead and cancel your log base 10 of 10, or you can go ahead and bring uh, that exponent on down as a coefficient. When I bring it down as a coefficient, I have 2 log base 10 of 10, and then my log base 10 and 10 cancel to 1, which just leaves me with 2. Okay. Okay. This next one has E's. So um, first thing I notice is that I have an exponent. I'd like to bring that exponent down. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that 3 out front. When I bring that 3 out front, I have 3 ln e minus ln e. Now there's two ways you can do it from here. We know that ln e's will cancel. That's how we've solved it before. Those are inverse functions. Those cancel. So this term I would just be left with 3. This term I would be left with the 1 that's in my exponent. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. Since we've already done that method, I'm going to show you another method. Okay. The other method here is I have um, two like terms, right? My ln's or my um, uh, the label on these terms. Okay, I have three of ln e minus one ln e. So since my log bases and inside numbers match, these are like terms, and I can combine their number parts. So three minus one gives me two ln e. And then again, L and E are inverses, so they cancel, which leaves me with 2. Okay, there's no right or wrong uh, way to solve this. You can cancel the L and E's first and then just um, simplify what's left over. Or since those terms are like terms, you can do it like I did here, where you combine them into one term and then reduce away the L and E. Either way is fine. Okay, so on this first one, let's see. On these ones, I'm going to switch gears. On the other ones, we were just simplifying. Here, um, there's nothing I can simplify, right? I have log base 4 of x and log base 4 of y. So since the inside numbers do not match, I can't combine these like like terms like I did on the previous one. So the only thing I can hope to do is maybe possibly write this as one log term. So the first thing I need to do is make sure there's no coefficients. So this one I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to write it as one single log. So I'm going to move this 2 back up into the exponent, and I'm going to move this 3 back up into the exponent. Okay. So when I do that, I will have log base 4 of x squared minus log base 4 of y to the third. Okay. So now I have two log terms without coefficients, so I can go ahead and write them as 1. So notice here I have a subtraction. If I have two terms being subtracted, that means that I can condense it into a division on my inside term or quotient. So when I combine these, I'm just going to write log base 4 once and then write my terms being divided. Remember, the negative term um, is the one that came from the bottom. So here that means my x squared was on top, my y to the third was on bottom. And I just leave it like that. Okay. Let's look at another one. This one I want to do the same idea. I look for coefficients first because coefficients have to be put back up into the exponent. Here I don't have any number coefficients other than one, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, again, I have a division. If I have a division, that condenses into, um, I'm sorry, I have subtraction. Subtraction condenses into division. So the one that has the negative sign is the one that came from the bottom. So that means log of x plus 4. The x plus 4 came from the bottom because that's the term being subtracted. So on top I have x squared minus 16. On bottom I have x plus 4. Now if these are not factorable, I would stop here. But I notice that on top I have a difference of squares, right? Up here this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to go ahead whoops, and factor it and see if I can simplify a little bit. So if I factor a difference of squares, that means on top this would be x plus 4 times x minus 4, because my base is x and 4. Those are the bases I have to square to get x squared and 16. And then on bottom, I have x plus 4. So notice I have a common factor on top and bottom, so I can just cancel those 
and my final answer is going to be log of x minus 4. Okay? And I just leave it like that. All right, so um, there are three for you to try. All right, so on this first one, notice the first thing I do is put my coefficients back up into the exponent. So my three goes up to make that two to the third power. My two goes up to make that four to the second power, okay? Then once I do that, then I can combine it into one log term. So when I condense it into one log term because I have a subtraction um, that condenses into a division or a quotient, my term that was negative goes to the bottom. So I have two cubed on top, four squared on bottom, then I just simplify. That gives me eight over 16, which reduces to one half. So I end up with log base seven of one half. Okay. On the second one, okay, second one, I need to go ahead and move this two back up into the exponent. Now notice there's already an exponent there. So when I move this back up, I multiply it times the number that's already there. So x to the negative one times two gives me x to the negative two. Okay. I have an addition of log terms. Since I have an addition, that condenses into multiplication. So when I multiply five and x to the negative two, I get five x to the negative two, right? And then we don't like negative exponents in our answers. So I take that x to the negative two and I move it across the fraction line. When I move it down to the bottom, it becomes x to the positive two. Okay? And we just leave it like that, log base b of five over x squared. And then on our last one, um, we have a subtraction. There's no coefficients to move back up. So um, we go ahead and condense this into a um, division or a quotient. The term that's being subtracted is the one that ends up on bottom. So I have x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over x plus 5. And then I factor using some product. Okay, Here I'd need a sum of 4 and a product of negative 5 which would have to be five minus one, right? Or five and negative one. So I went ahead and wrote it factored. And then once it's factored, we can co uh, cancel common factors. So that leaves us with just ln of x minus one. Anytime you have more than one term inside your log, make sure you use parentheses. Okay, if you were to type this in as ln x minus one, that's incorrect because they're thinking that you're only doing ln x and then whatever that equals minus one. So make sure you put the parentheses around the x minus one or whatever's left inside the log, okay? All right, so what we wanna look at now is I wanna show you how to do um, change of base. Change of base comes in really handy um, to be able to evaluate logs on a calculator. Remember we talked about logs on a calculator. Um, we have the common log, right, um, which is our log button on our calculator, okay? Log base 10, and we have our LN, which is our LN button on our calculator. So unless it's log base 10 or log base E, we don't have a way to punch these into our calculator and get a decimal form. So we have what's called the change of base formula, which helps us take any log base and change it into a different log base. Now, the formula here says we take log base B of X, and um, the way to change that into log base A is, or whatever our new base is, okay? So whatever we write here is what we want it to become, okay? So if we wanna change it to log base A, we do log base A of our original inside number, Okay, divided by log base B of our original base. So in other words, whatever our inside number is, we take the log of that on top, whatever our original base was, we put that on bottom. And we change it to whatever log we want. Now, would we ever wanna change it to a different log other than a common log or a natural log? I don't know why. But I do know that we would like to change it to a regular log or an LN so that we can use our calculator. So I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. Instead of using log base A, I'm going to say we could change this into um, the common log, log of X over log of B, or we could change it to the natural log by doing ln of x over ln of b. Now it doesn't matter which button you choose. If there's one that's easier to access on your calculator, I suggest you use it. If you do log x divided by log b or ln x divided by ln b, you'll get the same answer either way. Just make sure you do the same button on top and bottom of your fraction, otherwise you won't, okay? So let's look at some examples. It says round your answer to three decimal places. Make sure you pay attention 
to what your instructions say because I have a lot of people that miss problems off of rounding errors. Okay? So here we have log base 7 of 15 and we want a decimal approximation. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and change it to a log. You can do ln if you want. Log base 7 of 15. I do the log base that I want, so I'm just going to use log base 10. And I do log of my inside number, which here is 15, divided by log of my original base, which is 7. And a good way to remember which number goes on top and bottom is think your base goes in the basement. So if it was base 7, base 7 on the bottom in the basement. Okay, base is on bottom. And then I just divide these. You should be able to do this in your calculator using your log button. Um, and you should end up with 1.3916625, blah, blah, blah. It keeps going. Since we want to round to three decimal places, I go to my third decimal place here, which is a 1. And notice the number behind it is a 6. So since it's larger than or equal to 5, it's going to round that number up. So this is approximately equal to 1.392. Okay? Same thing with the next one. This one's a little bit different. They use pi. We still work it the same way, okay? Log base pi of five, if I wanna get a decimal approximation of that, um, I can't use base pi in my calculator, so I'm gonna change it to base 10 so I can use my log button. I do the log of my inside number, which was five, divided by the log of my base, which was pi, okay? So here we're doing the log button and we're using pi. Anytime you use pi, unless they tell you to approximate pi to 3.14, use the pi button on your calculator so it will keep all the decimal places and give you a more accurate answer okay so here when we do log of five divided by log of pi we should get 1.4059 and some more stuff again we're rounding it to three decimal places so i look at my third decimal place which is a five notice the number behind it is a nine so this one also rounds up so i get approximately 1.406 Okay. So there's one practice problem for you to try. Instead of using log, I'm going to have you try to do it with LN. I'll give you just a minute and then we'll go over it. Okay. All right. So when you try to change this into an LN, so you can use the LN button on your calculator, you just do LN of the inside number, which is three divided by LN of the original base, which is uh, one half. So you do LN of three divided by LN of one half. You should get negative 1.584 and some more stuff. And then round it to three decimal places. Here my third decimal place was a four. There was a nine behind it, so it rounded up. Okay. You would get the same thing if you did log three divided by log of one half. And one half you could do 0.5, that's fine too. Okay. I'm not sure what that equals in the middle, but you should get the same answer um, at the end when you round it. Okay, so whether you use LN or log, you get the same answer. Okay, all right, so that's the end of 4.3. 4.3, um, there's no worksheet, it's just a My Math Lab assignment. Um, if you have any questions, let me know.